There is nothing in this world that cannot be explained with logic and reason. Nothing in this world. Holmes? Hmm? You seem troubled. I am not troubled, Watson. I am preoccupied. That place was awful. Inhumane. It would be natural to experience some feelings of shock or fear. Men reduced to gibbering imbeciles, numb beyond recognition, powerless to help themselves. When a doctor does go wrong, they are the first of criminals. They have the nerve and they have the knowledge. That woman did not deserve the title. Such casual cruelty for such selfish aims. I knew another man like that once. He treated my mother, perhaps even killed her, depending on who you ask. My sincere condolences. In the end, she was just a shadow of herself. The outline of the person I recognized, but lacking all else, she was pushed until she cracked. Should you see me cracking, John? I must ask you to intervene. Nothing compels us to pursue this matter further, Sherlock. We can return to London. Report what we have discovered. Let more capable hands take over. Alas, there are no such hands. Were we to abandon our quest now, I fear no other would succeed in our stead. We know nothing of what awaits. What dangers lurk in the darkness? Nonsense. We draw nearer to New Orleans with every passing minute, and thus closer to the answers we seek. Those answers, for all their perversity and improbability, will nevertheless be the work of men. And that is a work I have studied well. So be it. I know you to be a diligent author, but if I may make one request. Kindly omit my mother and her suffering from your tale. Of course. Thank you, John. After our trip to Nippy, Switzerland, I can certainly use some of this new world heat. Do not get carried away, Watson. What we could certainly use are answers to my questions. I know, but you look exhausted. Why don't we find the hotel first? We shall rest when our investigation is over and not a moment sooner. I shall ask you to handle our bags while I search for the bank. As you wish. Oi! Stop it, you! Our luggage! Good Lord, what have you done? That's my stuff. I'm sorry, mister. It, it was an accident. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Black opals being auctioned at the banking house of E.W. Gray. Mr. Frank Barnaby, right? Auction's about to start. In the flesh. Now, if you'll excuse me. 
Well, hold up. Written invitation first. Can I present another piece of identification? Nope. That's why we send the invitation. Holmes, over here. Any luck? None. They're holding an auction, invitation only. The good news is, I know who might have one. We need to find Mr. Barnaby. Who? Frank Barnaby, most likely a local. And you think Mr. Barnaby would be happy to share his invitation? Let us first find him, then we can see if he is the generous type. How marvellous, Holmes. A city within a city. Indeed, those lanterns are delightful. It is as though we have been transported to the Orient. Can I ask you a question? I've heard about that. Let me tell you. <laughs> Rather unassuming for a jewelry store. Damn. He at it again. Barnaby still owes you. Locked. No he one's here. He can greenbacks. He'll pay him blood. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I'm bone tired, but yeah, I'll help you. This place is a Spartan charm, does it not? It does. My soul will always yearn for London's gloom, but it reminds me of Cordona in a nice way. Barnaby, unconscious but with his eyes open. Look, Watson, the two of you are just alike. Oh, great, so I look like a haggard alcoholic. Eureka! What have you got? An idea. First, we'll need Mr. Barnaby's clothes. Holmes. Watson, time is of the essence. You will go to the bank, not as yourself, but as Frank Barnaby. Holmes, we look nothing alike. The hat and coat will do the heavy lifting. Just stay cool, play the part, and no one will notice the difference. Trust me. Holmes, must we really indulge in this farce? It worked in Switzerland, didn't it? Sure, if you redefine the word worked. Where's my cash, Frank? In the bartender's tip jar? Where's the money, Barnaby? I'll wait here so as not to arouse suspicion. Mr. Barnaby. Uh, right you are. Shop owner. Right. Your invitation, sir? Here you go. You okay, sir? Seem to have the jumps. I, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm in a rush. Oh, come on in. Heavens, I've never seen gems so big. I simply must have them. This might be useful. I'll make a note. Morning, sir, and welcome to the E.W. Gray Banking House. The auction will begin shortly. Name's Zoe Clemens, and I'd be delighted to help you. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Clemens. I am Doc... Uh, Frank Barnaby. I do have some questions, if you don't mind. Forgive my curiosity, but who was the previous owner? Sir, I ain't at liberty to disclose them details. These gems are rather curious. What can you tell me about them? These rare beauties are black opals, all the way from Cooper Petty, South Australia. When they catch the light, the dark stone becomes a brilliant rainbow. It's something special. It doesn't say where these stones came from. No provenance, no previous owner. I'm starting to suspect they were illegally procured. What? We would never. I can assure you these gems were bought from one of New Orleans' most upstanding citizens, a philanthropist no less. If you would like to know more, I could get my manager. 
You old dog, Barnaby. <laughs> Didn't think you'd sober up for the auction. An hour ago, you were three sheets to the wind. Oh, well, uh, you know, I hold my liquor better than most. And the auction was an important business opportunity. An important business opportunity? Ha! <laughs> What have you done with the real Barnaby? <laughs> well, maybe I'm drunker than I thought, mister. Mister? What's wrong, Frank? You're looking pale. Don't you recognize your old pal, Grub? Of course I know you, Sheriff. Good. Now, while I have you, there's the matter of your outstanding fines. I've been more than reasonable, but I'm afraid the bills come due. Fines? Right. Uh, I I'm afraid I don't have anything on me. That's funny. Ain't you at the auction? I weren't born yesterday, Frank. Now, assault, battery, disorderly conduct, that's serious stuff. You got off easy, but if you don't pay up, things get a whole lot worse. Look, Sheriff, I'm not actually... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Think careful now, because Frank Barnaby only owes us cash. But fraud? Impersonation? That's weasel behavior. And you know what we do to weasels round these parts. Feed them to the gators. So, Frank, what's it gonna be? Here's all I have. Mighty fine of you. The people of this parish deserve peace. They don't take kindly to visitors. Don't miss that boat tomorrow morning, Doctor. I told you, Holmes. I told you it was a bad plan. Now we're penniless and wanted criminals. Hysteria gets us nowhere, Watson. Tell me what happened. The sheriff saw right through me. He knew who I was from the start. Extorted me for every coin I had. Bah. All that matters is what you learned about the gems. I shan't discuss it while still wearing that blighter's clothes. I'm going back to the boat to get changed. No, no! Was that your luggage again? I don't understand. Oh, we just got now our clothes order. are in the bloomin' water. It was like the luggage had legs of its own. Oh, Mr. Pratchett will have my head. I ain't sure what you did to the sheriff, but it must have been something real hairy to have him chuck your luggage off the pier. With respect, miss, have we met before? If you were the real Frank Barnaby, yeah, we would have. But where are my manners? I'm Lucy. And you are? John. I didn't mean to be rude. I've just had a difficult day, miss. Well, it's barely noon. And you've already made an enemy in Sheriff Grubb. The man starves his gators just in case someone crosses him. John who? Watson. Well, Johnny, if you plan on sticking around, you better change that suit, or Frank's reputation will catch up with you. And then you'll be a John Doe. Alas, I think one of those gators is currently devouring my spare clothes. <laughs> you've got yourself in a fine pickle. <laughs> All right, come on board the Nymph of Louisiana, and I'll sort you something to wear. The Nymph? Is that what it sounds like? Why are you helping me? Well, let's just say you ain't the only one who's had run-ins with the Sheriff. Way I see it, this city deserves better. Now quit your stalling and head on over to the Nymph. I'll be in room six. This Mr. Barterby is proving rather useful. Perhaps you're not so different after all. One more word, Holmes, and I'll hand you over to the Sheriff. Sorry, was that John talking, or Frank? Oh. Go annoy someone else while I visit the nymph.
Well, look at you. All dressed up with nowhere to go. I can't thank you enough. As I was saying, our journey has hardly gone to plan. We seem no closer to finding our missing people than when we left. Hmm. Well, if there were anything to know, Champagne will know it. She's across everything in New Orleans. Look for her in the Fisherman's Village behind the Creole Quarter. Thank you again, Lucy. I shall make my way there now. Good luck, Johnny. Keep out of trouble. Oh, forgive me, Watson. The difference is plain as day. What a remarkable transformation from Barnaby. If we're critiquing wardrobes, Holmes, maybe you can explain why you used to roll just one sleeve up. Did you get bored halfway through? Yes, it really not me having them. Fence here. Them two don't take kindly to gents, especially foreigners. How can champagne help you? Trip to the bayou? Feeding a huge crocodile? <laughs> Some other time, perhaps. Word has it you know everything that goes on round these parts. Maybe, maybe not. What you want to know? The bank in town recently purchased a valuable collection of gemstones from a wealthy man. What do you know of it? Cheer. I hear everything. This time I tell you for free. Next time you pay. Thank you. May have been one, two weeks ago. Rich man's butler sold him some black opals. And this rich man is? Don't know his name, only that he from the French Quarter. Folk back in town could take you there. It's all I know. You need a boat? I hire him out for dollars. Or a bottle of you know what. Thank you for the offer and the help. Are you all right, sir? It'll come again. I will... I will die. What happened? The lower of death came to me last night. I know it will come again. Let's start from the beginning. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Could you describe last night's events for me? Uh... I'm called Seabrook. It was my mom, Brigitte. She came to me in the shape of a giant black rooster. Before that, some hit the wall outside. Then she came in. She took my will and she led me to the water. Perhaps you were dreaming? I wish I was. The great gator was there. It called me and I couldn't resist, but then the spell broke and I managed to crawl ashore. Interesting. I know how it sounds to an outsider, but it was the lure of death and it ain't finished with me. You mentioned a lure. What is that exactly? You outsiders only know one god. But there are many and we call them lowers. 
and Mammon Brigitte is one of them. She is the lower of death and life. She heals the righteous and punishes the guilty. Did you feel anything apart from fear last night? Yeah. The signs of Mammon's presence, no doubt about it. Everything became blurry, and my mouth was dry, and, and the light became very bright. That is something. Cheap and straw. Some chewing tobacco leaves. Judging by the facial features, Cole and one of his relatives. With William in Shreveport, 1879. Supper leftovers. It's not a simple tea, a herbal concoction, rather. That tea seems not to be very popular here. He dropped a cup here. This one is almost odorless. Cold ground herbs here. Interesting. It smells sweet. I will take it just in case. I would love to learn more about these. The properties of some herbs are truly amazing herbs. And some are extremely dangerous. The damage is recent. We have a feathered friend in the case. The poor bird crashed against Cole's house. A feather. Not black, however. Did you really expect to find the feather of rock here? Sir? I must ask you, did you have a drink last night? No, sir, I didn't take a sip. It all happened before I went to bed, and I only drink to fall asleep. That's just how it is lately. Your boat is wrecked. What happened? Well, I stumbled over a cypress root. You'd need some force to cause that damage. Yeah, and to be really down on your luck. There are too many imprints here. It's hard to say where he did or didn't go. More boot prints here. was having dinner. He was alone. The herbal decoction started to affect him. He became dizzy and dropped the cup. Hallucinations and stimulation brought him outside. He could have drowned if not for the sobering effects of the cold water. Sir? Cole, 
I am sure that you were alone last night. The Lowers were not with you. Well, what else could you say? I didn't say that I disbelieve you. I'm wondering about this recipe. It's just herbal tea. I went to Mr. Sam D and he gave me the recipe to help calm my heart. Is he a doctor? He is a voodooist. It was risky, but all I wanted was some sleep. Where can I find him? On the side of the church at one of the entrances to the fisherman's quarter. Look for a Veve sign, but watch what you see. He has the power of voodoo. I'll be careful. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I've heard about that. Let me tell you. Are you able to help me? I've heard about that. Let me tell you. Cole, where are these herbs from? I bought them from Zora. Her stall is at the market near the port. I bet Zoro will kill her. Did you see how she rushed there? Fierce. Yeah, I'm afraid for them Chinese and for anyone who messes with her. May I ask for your assistance? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else might help you better, sir. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else might help you better, sir. Help me, please. I'm bone tired. But yeah, I help you. Uh. 
Are oh, these herbs fresh? <laughs> Excuse me, are you Zora? I am. What do you want? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I have several questions, if you don't mind. You are selling herbs, is that right? Do you want to buy something? Not really. I wanted to ask if you have the herbs from this list. Goldenrod, jasmine, strawberry. These are very common. I do sell them same as any other herb merchant. I came here because Cole Seabrook mentioned you. Do you know him? Unfortunately, yeah. He's my late husband's brother. Have you heard of Jimson weed? A poisonous plant, but it can help ease the pain if you know how to use it. Some believe you can use it to create a zombie, a willless slave. Is that what you wanted for Cole? Or did you sell it accidentally? Did Cole get what he deserved? <laughs> the lowest heard my prayers. So you admit it was on purpose? I admit there's a higher power maintaining order and justice in this world, and Cole got what he deserved. I'm happy that it happened, but that doesn't mean I'm to blame. Can I ask what caused such hatred? The Sheriff confiscated all our weapons, and then the disappearance began. William wanted one raffle, just one to protect us. Cole was too eager to help, and as a result, my will got a bullet in his chest. How did Cole explain what took place? He just walked away as if nothing happened. Cole is the reason I lost my husband, and he should pay for it. Don't you want to know what really happened? For me, it's clear. An innocent man would tell everything. Only the guilty remain silent. Sir? I've learned about your tragedy, Cole. My condolences. Zora told you, didn't she? Can you tell me what happened and why you feel guilty? My brother died. I'm alive, and William is not. That's why. Tell me, what was the plan? William had to get into the warehouse through the eastern gate, the one not far from the market on the edge of the railroad. I hid behind the barrels. I was on the lookout. So what went wrong? William went in, then came back with a rifle. I saw him jump off the crate, and then BANG! He was lying there dead. Did you see who shot him? It was the bloody sheriff. I swear I saw him smiling. What happened next? My heart stopped. I froze. Then the sheriff yelled, See if there are more rats! And I woke up. I ran away. I had just one task and I failed it. And for my mistake, the lower of death will come for me. The warehouse eastern gate. According to Cole, it all started somewhere near the barrels. Chewed tobacco. That's the spot. I hid behind the barrels. I was on the lookout. An oily handprint. The substance has solidified. I assume that this is cosmoline with which the gun was lubricated. William went in. Then came back with a rifle. William was shot here. I saw him drop off the crane and then bang! He was lying there dead. The bullet went through him, and based on its velocity and mass, I would say the shooter was no more than 35 or 40 feet away.
the sheriff stood here, Cole had no chance to spot him approaching. It's a terrible choice of position, and it cost his brother his life. Then the sheriff yelled, See if there are more rats! And I woke up. And what did Cole do? My heart stopped. I froze. This lamp did not leave William a chance to go unnoticed. Cole sought safety in flight. Now I see why Cole thinks he deserved it. He simply left his brother behind. He did not have much of an option. Sad. I think Zora would like to know about this. What do you want? Take care. What do you want? Mom, I spoke with Cole about your husband and went to the warehouse to inspect it. I cannot say that either he or your late husband were innocent. They both decided to steal. How dare you! Ma William only wanted to protect us! The same as Cole did. However, I know the man responsible for William's death. It is the sheriff. That jackal! Anyway, don't expect words of gratitude from me, Mr. Holmes. Your truth changes nothing. Sir? I have good news. No lowers are coming for you. You were poisoned. Wh what? Zora sold you Jimson weed instead of Jasmine. That was the cause of your hallucination. She wanted revenge. It, it doesn't change anything. Look, the lowers were guiding her. I deserved it. I went to the warehouse, and I know what happened. You are guilty of a poorly chosen observation point, but not of William's death. Your only choice was to run or die with him. That's what I should have done. I should have died with my brother. Your quarter doesn't need another wretched man. You must keep living for your brother's sake. But how Zora looked at me? I have no right to move on after what happened. She might not be ready to forgive yet, but don't give up. You can only earn Zora's forgiveness by being alive. That's not as easy as it sounds. Don't waste the life you have on something that can't be undone. Watson, what have we here? A local crime star. A star? You have a strange way with words. Frankly, we have more pressing matters. I'm not going after these troublemakers, but the posters will add nicely to my collection of criminal profiles. I read a study that suggests facial features can determine a person's tendency towards cruelty or deviant behavior. Well, you can't stop progress.
This will be enough for my collection. As long as you don't hang those ugly faces up at Baker Street. French Quarter, and get us there fast. <laughs> 